Please. Good morning, everyone. Welcome into the Espace 2000 for the presentation of Publicis Group. We are very happy and very lucky to have you today. And I would like to welcome my fellow colleagues who will uh, present with us our retail media and commerce activities within Publicis Group. So Adam Skinner, the COO of Citrus, and Sarah Ofstater, the COO of Profitero. My name is Thibaut Aignon. I am the managing director of Epsilon International. And we will go through a presentation for 45, 50 minutes. The presentation will have three parts. The first one will be the presentation of the new platform that we are launching today. It's the on-site plus off-site retail media platform. And Adam will walk you through the platform, its key features and capabilities. And if everything is working well, you will have a live demo. After that, I will uh, speak about the next level of collaboration between the retailer and the brand. Adam will speak about their, collabor their collaboration on retail media. And I will speak about their collaboration around data and how this can enhance their readiness for a cookie-less world. Actually, the data collaboration and the overall data skills is the wet sweat of everything that Publicis Group is doing on the commerce, data, and uh, retail media activity. And this would be a very good uh, introduction and a logical next step to introduce you to Profitero. Profitero has been acquired by Publicis Group a few weeks ago. And so Sawa will uh, be able to tell you uh, how this is uh, enhancing the overall Publicis Group offering. Just a small uh, introductory uh, word. We were supposed to have uh, Boad Moran, the CEO of Citrus, with us today. The thing is that he caught COVID. So Adam is uh, <laughs> is taking the flag for the Citrus organization. You will see Boad uh, in the video. He has helped us tremendously uh, uh, to prepare all of this presentation. And I wanted to, uh, to thank him for uh, everything he has been doing uh, with us. Adam? I leave you the floor for uh, the presentation of our uh, uh, retail media uh, platform. 45 minutes of presentation overall. Then you will have the opportunity to ask a question uh, as, uh, as long as you want. And after that, we will uh, be able to share all together uh, uh, some food on the publicis area. Adam, over to you. Thank you, Tebo. And uh, everyone, uh, I don't have as beautiful accent as Thibaut. Uh, I have an Australian accent and apologies for um, having to listen to me for 20 minutes, but uh, we'll, we'll see how we go. Thank you. Um, so um, I wanted to firstly introduce you, I suppose, to the, uh, to the retail media revolution. This is what we're presenting today. Um, and uh, realistically, um, you know, we uh, joined together these uh, two companies uh, nine months ago um, through an through the Publicis acquisition, okay, uh, and that we, we had a goal to create a seamless, simplified, and identity-led platform that will power the future of retail media. And so what, what we've done, we've achieved that, okay, and uh, I'll be walking you through, I suppose, the, the three main goals that we set out to achieve, and that is, is that our platform needs to be simplistic, okay? It needs to kind of go back to the forefront of what has made Citrus Ad so successful over the last four years okay and the retail media space has become increasingly crowded um, over the last few years and so we need to take a step back and understand what what actually is important to the brand the advertiser the, the consumer and the retailer so simplifying retail media uh, we need to optimize the on-site and off-site um, uh, capabilities and the performance loop okay so bringing those two worlds together and um, uh, ultimately, you're leaving 80% of, uh, of revenue on the table um, if you're not optimizing that entire channel funnel. Uh, and then ultimately, we need to be future-proofed, okay, through identity-led um, and across the full customer journey, okay? So, um, and that all comes back to transparent measurement. So you'll see throughout the presentation today, the core of what we're trying to do is transparent reporting, okay, and transparency back to the retailer, back to the brand, and back to the advertiser. Um, so this path forward, okay, with for retail media will uh, strengthen um, both of the joint technologies across Epsilon and Citrus Ad. 
Um, so I wanted to take a step back, okay, first, and uh, actually just walk through what actually retail media is and why retail media. Um, so what we what we look at is these six quadrants in terms of what the the benefits of retail media are today, and that is really around an ultimate customer understanding. Okay, so um, you know the, the the customers that are going on site, the retailer is able to actually understand that full customer journey. Um, the share of voice at point of sale as well. So we were able to, uh, from a retail media perspective, the retailer is able to report back to the brand and the advertiser their complete share of, vo share of voice and also being transparent as well. Um, it's post-cookie personalization protected. Okay, so in the world of uh, the deprecation of the cookie, okay, retail media um, through first retailers' first-party data and inside their walled gardens. So it's protected from that. Um, and it enables del delivering scale with audience extension, okay, coupled with uh, off-site activation. Uh, and then it drives online and in-store sales um, and activation through that. And ultimately, it's brand safety. So dollars that get invested into, um, into retail media, okay, are safe dollars, okay, and they're transparent dollars as well. So you can trace all of the results back, um, back through. So I just wanted to give us uh, give give some statistics as well, okay, on the growth of retail media over the last few years. Um, so uh, you'll see throughout the presentation as well that um, we're we're about to hit close to um, sixty billion dollars um, in the U.S. in 2023. Um, Forty-one billion um, in, tw in in this year is forecasted, uh, and that's nearly ten billion ten billion dollars up from last year. So in a post-pandemic world. Okay, we're still seeing retail media grow um, year on year. Okay, and uh, and and it's the fastest growing segment of digital advertising, um, on par with connected TV, um, podcast advertising. Okay, um, and we, uh, through the eMarketer, um, they're the source. Um, they're predicting that one in five digital ad dollars will be invested in um, in retail media um, by 2023. Um, and will surpass $50 billion. This is a significantly safe and growing uh, media sector. So introducing uh, um, uh, Citrus Ad powered by Epsilon. And so only after nine months after the acquisition, um, we're, today we're launching Citrus Ad powered by Epsilon, which is the industry's first end-to-end -end self-service retail media platform across on-site, off-site, and other channels. Uh, I will now play a video um, that's, uh, that's been recorded by Brad. Okay, As Thibaut said, uh, Brad couldn't be here today, um, but he's here virtually in spirit. <laughs> okay, um, And I uh, um, hope you enjoy it. Citrus Ad is the global leader in retail media today with innovation at its core. And we're so excited to announce that just nine months after the publicist acquisition, that we've been able to take the Epsilon technology of off-site marketing using its core ID and Citrus Ad's on-site marketing and bring them together under one unified UI. Using the Citrus Ad retail media platform, underpinned by the Epsilon Core ID and first party cookie system, enables retailers to take back control and own their advertising ecosystems. From the very beginning, Citrus Ad has always been about simplifying retail media. With the Epsilon integration, we have done just that, taken a complex advertising platform and made it simplified beautiful and easy to use for brands. When logging into the Citrus Ad platform, brands will now be able to choose whether they want to launch an on-site campaign, promoting their products on retailer websites, or an off-site campaign, broadcasting their products to the greater world, all within five simple clicks. The self-serve off-site campaign creator will use first-party data 
making it future-proof in the world of Web 3.0. All of this combined creates a campaign that allows brands to reach millions of off-site customers in a matter of clicks and view them in real time back within the Citrus platform, taking complex reporting and distilling it down into beautiful tables. This allows for the continual tweaking and real-time optimizations for both on-site and off-site campaigns. So what does this all mean? In a post-pandemic era, where brands cannot rely on data from last year, last month, or even last week, brands need real-time data at their fingertips today. And we are delighted to offer this first-of-a-kind solution to the market. With over 100 major global retail partners and growing every day, we put the power back into the retailer's hands and away from big tech. With innovation and simplicity at the forefront of everything that we do, we look forward to bringing you more and more exciting updates in the future. So welcome to the retail media revolution. Um, so um, when we started this, when we started this out, we we set some kind of clear guidelines that we wanted to achieve with um, with this. And um, so I'll take you through. They've got we've got five of them. Okay. So um, retail media needs to be holistic. Okay. So uh, you know when you're unify when you're unifying you know retailers, brands, advertisers together from an on-site and off-site perspective. Okay, you need to be able to take in those channels, okay, and, and we need to be talking about simplicity, but the different differentiation, okay, of our product, okay, is basically with the reach and the performance, okay, so um, uh, coupled with Epsilon and Citrus Ad, okay, um, the, the reach is and, and the performance is unparalleled in the market, okay, and that can be proven with a simple match test uh, today. So irrespective, I suppose, of the channel, okay, whether that's um, on-site, off-site, okay, sponsored product, banners, banner X, okay, display, video, connected TV, digital screens, email, you can see the possibilities are endless, okay, coming into this one unified platform. So holistic. Um, and the next, the next, uh, next, next goal that we set out was it needs to be it needs to be simple, okay? So sim um, simplicity at its core, okay? So retail media needs to be um, simple at its core. So this, unif this unified platform allows campaigns to be created, okay, uh, within five clicks, which I'll show you in, a, um, in the demonstration shortly. Um, and so our integration is simplified uh, with beautiful visual reporting, okay, and it's easy to use, okay? So the five clicks there is basically set up, select your products, target your audience, upload your creative or create your creative, review and traffic. So the campaign can be live within a matter of five clicks. <clears throat> and then um, uh, retail media should be identity led. Okay, so that is, is really around brands want real time access to data at their fingertips today, not yesterday, not last week. So things are changing. Um, uh, almost down to an hourly basis where they need to, uh, you know, they need to update their campaigns, okay, or they need to be looking at data. And so our unified platform is built on industry-leading identity that is underpinned by more than 300 million global privacy-protected core IDs um, through the Epsilon platform. And so this allows unprecedented scalability in the platform. Um, and as you can see, that's across channels, okay? So sponsored, on-site display, brand pages, display and mobile, email, connected TV, social. And then finally, okay, uh, the, the, the uh, it sh retail media needs to be measurable, okay? Um, so uh, this is, you'll see this throughout the entire presentation, you know, transparency and measurement, transparency and reporting. And so our unified platform offers this transparent measurement to evaluate campaign performance, whether that's on-site, off-site, in-store, all in the one single unified UI. So brands will now be able to see how their campaigns are tracking from an on-site perspective, okay, but then how, how the organic has been boosted okay, from off-site traffic okay, or in-store conversions. Okay, so um, uh, access to this single 
pane glass view of reporting, okay, in real time, um, irrespective of att attribution and a single view of attribution, um, re regardless of where your customer purchases, whether that's online, in store, um, et cetera. So now I'm going to um, uh, give a quick demo of the um, of the platform, okay, and walk and walk through. So what has made so what, so what has made um, Citrus Ad successful in the past, okay, is it's an intuitive, innovative user interface that the brands actually love um, using because it's simp simple at its core. Okay, so we've, we've given the, the, the user interface that the brands and advertisers love um, a, 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 an update. Okay, so most people will know how to use this, okay, and it, and it can be activated and feature flagged in an existing Citrus Ad client today. Okay. So with simplicity at its core, hopefully this will play. There we go. With um, with simplicity at, at the service of every uh, at the core of everything we do. Okay. Self service is critically important to to us at Citrus Ad. Okay. So um, we want to make sure that brands, advertisers, and retailers can use the platform. Okay, so now um, brands and advertisers will be able to use the same simple intuitive user interface within Citrus that they, they use today to set up on-site campaigns. They'll be able to do the same to set up off-site campaigns through Epsilon in a matter of clicks. And so using the controls within Citrus Ad that they already know, they can set a start and end date, they can set a budget, okay, and then they can traffic, um, traffic their off-site campaign. So they're able to browse and search the product listing, okay, and select multiple products for their campaign. So this is no different to the controls that are in the on-site campaign builder um, with Citrus Ad. And then from here, the brand is able to be self-guided, okay, to complete the entire setup process. Okay, so completely simple and completely self-service. So you can see here that um, uh, the, um, the hero um, hero products have been selected as well, okay, and uh, there's um, notification down the bottom that is um, guiding the, the brand and the advertiser to what they need to do next. Um, so from here, the brand's able to then um, select their goal, okay, um, and their audience of the campaign, okay. So whether they want to maximise sales, they want to target new customers, or they want to target existing customers, and then from here, um, this is where uh, they are able to absolutely um, uh, upload, okay, their creative, okay, or create um, create their creative inside the the intuitive banner builder, okay, or creative builder that Citrus Ad has today. Okay, and so once the goal has been set, the brand and advertiser is able to use the same UI to upload or create their creative. Okay, and if they choose the create option, they will be taken to a familiar UI that they know and use how to um, know and use today. Okay, they'll be able to find the products that they've selected. Okay, then they'll be able to create the headline. They'll then be able to define the headline color, and then they'll be able to uh, define the call to action button as well as the links, and then set a background uh, color. And then finally, um, what they'll be able to do is, abs um, is uh, actually preview what the ad is gonna look like inside the open web. So this is completely self-service, back to the brand, okay? And in some cases, uh, uh, we're seeing this being handled by a large number of teams, okay, um, to, get the, to get this live. Finally, they're able to review the entire campaign in one single view, okay, before they, um, before they push that live, okay, um, and so they can see all the products, they can see how the ad's going to look, okay, and they can see uh, all of the components uh, before they submit the campaign for trafficking. And then once the campaign has been sent for review, um, the, this is the this is a pretty intuitive part. The brand is actually able then to see in one single view all of their on-site campaigns, all of their off-site campaigns, as well as their status. Okay, in one view, 
They're, they're, this approach is now a true one-stop shop to retail media, okay, taking into account on-site, off-site, and an in-store campaign activation as well. And then ultimately, as Brad said, it puts the power back in the retailer's hands. So this, this in itself will enable turbocharging of monetization opportunities, okay? So, and how are we, how we gonna do that? Tebo will talk a little bit more about this um, uh, shortly, but taking into account first party data, okay, coupling that and adding in the Epsilon core ID, okay, ultimately gives us unified targeting and measurement, okay? And that bridges the world of on-site and off-site together, okay? And, um, and I'll walk through some stats in a second, but, but ultimately where we get to, okay, is what we said at the start, okay, which is um, uh, transparency on measurement, uh, transparency on reporting, okay, and the ability for brands to actually see how, uh, um, how, the, how the campaign contribution for an offsite campaign is contributing to uh, organically on-site um, on activation. So, so what's, our, what's our vision at Citrus Ad? Okay, our vision is to lead retail transformation by connecting retailers, brands, consumers together through a unified UI. Okay? Um, and that um, uh, in turn allows on-site, off-site and in-store um, uh, activation using one single retail media, um, re retail media platform. Okay? And we ultimately do this by bridging all of this together. Okay? Um, and um, so uh, um, through our on-site capabilities, through our off-site capabilities, um, through, uh, through Epsilon, okay, and through our in-store partners, um, we're able to, um, uh, these statistics, um, uh, show what we're able to achieve. Okay, so 56% of shoppers um, uh, purchase products that they saw advertised on a groceries website through um, either on-site or through another channel. 50 to 60 percent of online clicks typically result in an in-store sale within four days uh, and 30 to 40 percent okay of um, uh, uh, additional reach okay with an off-site um, campaign okay so if you if uh, for in standalone on-site campaign um, uh, if it was coupled with an off-site campaign we're seeing um, an additional reach of around 30 to 40 percent which is uh Pretty good numbers, um, and um, so so what what does all this mean? Okay, um, it means that we're putting the power back into the retailers' ha um, retailers' hands and back into the brands' hands, and so ultimately our vision and and our ethos, okay, is to to put this away from big tech and back into the hands of the people that are using these tools, and to create a value exchange between the brands, the retailers, and the consumers. Okay, where retailers ultimately achieve scale and outcomes, the brands exceed performance expectations and build trust back with the consumer, and the consumers ultimately get a personalized experience without an ad, um, uh, you know, a poor ad experience in their face. And so this is the next generation of retail media that we're launching today. Um, so now I'll hand across to Thibaut um, to, um, to talk about the Epsilon piece. So actually, Adam gave you some overview of what we can achieve in terms of retail media collaboration. Where I will insist is actually a collaboration beyond retail media. We can of course collaborate and increase the collaboration between the brand and the retailer when it comes to media buying. But all of that is surrounded by extremely accurate data and so the logical next step of this collaboration is not only media collaboration, but data collaboration. And this is why I have uh, uh, the title for this uh, small uh, uh, chapter of the presentation, Beyond Retail Media. To understand what is driving this kind of uh, new era of the relationship of the brand and the, and the retailer, we just need to take a step back and understand how the retail media landscape has evolved over the last few years and even over the last few months. Everything started with measurement data. Brand wanted to have a direct access to the grosser transaction and to the effectiveness of their marketing spend validated by transaction. Now they are looking for more. Of course, they still want the direct access to measurement, 
and the transparency of the performance of their media investment. But they also want to know more about those customers, to understand what has been their customer journey online, what kind of website they have been browsing before launching on the retailer website, what are their key demographic attributes, and ultimately, how this kind of retail media activity can enhance the way they are talking to their customer and the way they are positioning their product. The second item is that retail media started as a subset of performance media. At the beginning, when you look at the kind of budget that were directed to direct media spend, it was essentially performance media budget. And there was a really good reason for that. The good reason was that it was directly validated by a transaction, so you can actually compute what was the direct performance of your media spend. But now, brands are looking for more, and they are looking for a full funnel activation that is actually including brand building. A very famous uh, consulting firm has actually published a study last week. It was not intended, but it was a very nice, uh, uh, a very nice event where they are stating that up to one third of the retail media spend are actually brand building spend. So this means that the retail media landscape has definitely broadened its scope to more media spend dollar, including brand building that are the very top of the funnel. And finally, retail media has evolved in terms of format. It started with on-site delivery. This was the most straightforward way to consider retail media. And now it's reaching new format. It's reaching new format and new premise. Brands want actually to leverage this kind of direct relationship they are having with customer backed by retailer data to reach their shopper, to reach their prospect into new format. On publisher website, through emails, emails that the retailer are sending, or directly in store, thanks to digital screen or specific promotion that the retailer can put forward thanks to their partnership with the brand. But all of that has one very important condition that is the winning recipe for a successful retail media strategy. All of that is backed by the retailer first party data. And so the retailer, on top of looking for new retail media partners, they are also looking for a new identity partner. Everything starts with helping the retailer take back control of their data destiny. Retailers are having a lot of data. The data they are having on their website, on who is browsing uh, to look at their product. Retailers, they are, they are having on their CRM file, their loyalty program, their transaction file, but also data that they are getting from in-store. All of this data is very fragmented. It's different kind of data. Some, some of them are anonymized. For example, you're not always logged in when you are browsing a retailer website. Some of them are extremely detailed with your name and address, for example, when you are uh, registering to a loyalty program. And so retailers are looking for new kinds of partners to help them enhance their overall identity framework to send, bring their retail media capabilities to the next level. And this is where, within situ sat powered by Epsilon, we have a unique value proposition to bring forward because thanks to Epsilon, we have a leading identity solution we know better than anyone else who the shopper are. We can enhance the retailer data with additional demographic data, with an additional behavioral data, with additional uh, touch point or uh, response to media framework. And this is bringing the retailer data to the next level. This is allowing the retailer to bring its partnership with their brand to the next level, not only to leverage its inventories, but also to leverage its data, to be able to collaborate and to enhance both customer understanding. So how does it work in practice? In practice, everything starts with building the right technological framework. Retailers and their brands need the right clean room technology to be able to collaborate together on the data side, gathering multiple data sources. It's true on uh, ID-based data, it's data and touch point where you don't always know who the final customer are, typically who is browsing your website. It also includes name-based data, the loyalty program, the 
newsletter registration list, both on the retailer and on the brand side. And finally, this kind of data framework with unified data and a single customer view is allowing both the retailer and their brands to actually call external data partners to enhance their data dictionary, to enhance their data assets with data that they could not get by themselves, helping for data partners to be able to ask very specific attributes and overall enhance what they know about their customer. So they are, thanks to this technological framework, the brands and their retailer can actually collaborate on multiple data dimension. This is true basically on the customer overlap. So who are the retailer uh, shoppers that are also a brand shopper? But it's not the only side. They can definitely enrich their customer understanding with additional attributes. They can have a brand view, but also a category view and, a, and an SKU view. So this is enabling to get brand access to competitive benchmark. How are they performing on a specific retailer portfolio? What can they get to get a bigger uh, market share about a specific brand or a specific category? The last one, and no, not the last one, but they can also increase their behavioral information about their customer before landing on a retailer website, what has been the website, what has been the contextual information that their shopper went through, and how is all of this informing their marketing strategy around their customer. And finally, one very important point where they can actually collaborate is the response to media. How can they anticipate what the reaction to a specific customer to a media ad will be? Thanks to that, they will be able to understand when to message them, how to message them. Is an email more efficient, more performant than a display on a, on a big publisher website? All of those kind of touch points, all of those kind of data backed by real efficiency will allow them to design their best marketing mix. And within Epsilon, within Citrus, we have kind of our secret sauce to make that work. The first one is that they can look at their shopper and their prospect at individual level. So everything is tied to a single customer view where all of the profile are gathering several attributes. Of course, they are getting a multitude attribution framework, whatever the touch point and whatever uh, the format by which the shopper has been uh, contacted. All of that is embedded with a native consent management tool. And this is a very important framework because the retailer on their website they have all of the tools to ask for the consent to gather uh, their marketing framework with the shopper and the same apply on the publisher premise. And finally, this is allowing the marketing expert, this is allowing the data scientist to deliver 100% privacy compliant analytics. So they can run small model, they can, um, they can run on their existing customer some lookalike model to actually find the next level of their customer and get some connection with their prospect. And finally, thanks to all of this data around them, they have collaborated together, they can deliver upon various marketing use cases. The most straightforward one is insight. How can I get a better understanding on who my customer is? The second one is media planning. This is a core capability of Publicis Group historically that will be further enhanced by what we are doing in retail media. Thanks to what I know about my customer, how can I plan on my marketing action to be able to reach them at the right moment, at the, at the right time, through the right format. Activation, obviously, this is what Adam has described you. We needed one single interface to be able to launch campaign. Would it be on-site, off-site, through email, through in-store, or through social media? And this is what the Citrus Ad Powered by Epsilon platform is delivering. And finally, and this is one of uh, the key priority of the brand, they want access to aggregated and transparent measurement in real time to be able to see the direct effectiveness of their, investing, of, of their marketing investment and to tie their action to an additional sale. And thanks to our footprint on retail media, thanks to our access to the retailer transaction data, this is something we can provide them with. So all of that will allow the brand and the retailer to take back control on their customer relationship in a cookie-less world. This has been put, the customer relationship, has been put at the forefront of their priority, particularly for what's coming. 
we know brands, but also retailers, will see increasing challenges in reaching their customer, in reaching their prospects, because today, a lot of the reach are done with third-party cookies. Thanks to our retail media revolution, we are providing them with a cookie-less way to get in touch with their customer. This is the current state of retail media. But at Publicis, we are always thinking on what's going next. And we can already see what's the next frontier. The next frontier will be not only a single and unified retail media platform, but it will be a combined retail media and commerce platform. When you put yourself in the hand of the brand, of course they want to launch campaign on-site and off-site backed by retailer data. Of course, they want to collaborate with retailers on their data to enhance their first-party data. But they also want to understand how they are performing organically on e-commerce website. They want to understand their share of voice. They want to understand how they are positioned versus competition. And this has been the key driver of Publicis acquisition on Profitero because this is exactly the area of skills and expertise of Profitero to allow brands to understand better how they are performing within the retailer premise versus competition. And I will hand it over to Sawa, who will present you how Profitero is actually enhancing this overall environment for Publicis Group. Thank you, Thibaut. So you got the Australian, you've got the French. I, it sounds like the beginning of a, of a joke. <laughs> An American walks into Viva Tech. Um, so hi, I'm Sarah Hofstetter. I'm the president of Profitero. Um, and I, I wanted to go through a little bit on, um, oh, I am not the COO of Profitero. I do not handle operations. <laughs> I'm the president of Profitero. We'll just get rid of that. Um, so here's the thing. We, we all have, we all, we, we all live in homes with, with indoor plumbing, right? I'm assuming, safe to assume, everybody here has indoor plumbing. So if your, your plumbing is working well, you don't really think about it. And when it's not working well, it can be a disaster. And water is a beautiful thing. On the one hand, especially with good plumbing, it gets all the, to all the right places. It hydrates, it sanitizes, it's fantastic. You have, if it, if it ends up clogging up too much and being relegated to only one room in your home, perhaps um, your bathroom, the rest of the house is starved and the bathroom is flooded. What we don't want to have happen is that the data, because data is water, um, starts going into too many places and it overwhelms or it sits in a center of excellence and it gets constrained. And that is a big part of what we do at Profitero is to help make sure that all of the exciting data about what is happening to the brands across 700 retailers in 50 countries, 70 million products, 4,000 brands, how do you take all of that data and simplify it in a way that's like plumbing, that it's going to the right places? And I bet you never thought plumbing was going to be sexy, but... <laughs> I proved you wrong. Um, so the question is, how do you get it done? So I'll give you a quick overview on Profitero, and then we're going to talk about how brands really leverage this. So we heard about it from Adam on how the how retail media and the technology that Adam um, and Citrus Ad bring and how that helps empower the retailers. Thibaut talked about the interrelationship between the brands and those retailers, and I'm going to talk about how the brands use ultimately all of these data sets. More people are buying online than ever before. So you've got to be on top of everything. We're talking placement, product content, pricing, promotions, reviews. Everything that influences the decision to buy has to be well executed everywhere you sell online. Introducing Profitero, your trusted e-commerce analytics platform backed by an unmatched team of experts. We give you powerful visibility into your data every day and guidance to grow your sales faster, boost your brand perception, and gain a competitive advantage. Our technology analyzes millions of search results and product pages across thousands of retailer websites and 50 countries every day. 
and uses sophisticated algorithms to deliver category share, traffic, and conversion rates, giving you and all the other teams across your organization the information to make the right decisions to grow faster in one platform. Be alerted when products are out of stock so you can replenish inventory or adjust advertising and know exactly where your products are positioned against competitors so you can take advantage to move up the ranks. Convert lookers into buyers by identifying content improvements and promos. And because everything's connected, you know what's driving sales and share of category and what isn't and can easily see and act on the levers driving performance. What are you waiting for? Jo Sorry, I know that I only have a little bit of time and if I show you the whole thing, then you're never gonna wanna come back. Um, but what, one of the things that becomes so important, think about all of those different use cases in a one and a half minute video. You can help with marketing, sales, um, supply chain, pricing, revenue management, customer support. What if somebody says a bad review about you and you say, they say your food tastes terrible. Social listening is one thing. Ratings and reviews are exactly at that point of purchase. So you can do everything with your retail media to get somebody to show up on your product description page. But every single pixel on that product description page is your TV advert, it is your banner ad, it is your product, it is your packaging, it is your everything, and it's usually the least attended to. And when you win there, you can convert in a very, very different way. Now make no mistake, this is an hourly change of what is happening on the search results. So when you heard in Brad's video about things can be changing every month, every week, it's every hour. And so if you don't have a hands-on keyboard approach to winning on this or an algorithmically driven approach to winning this, you're gonna be conquested and your competitors are gonna take over. And so in this case, smarts are more important than scale. I'll give you an example. Again, the American using an American example. So in, in this past year's Super Bowl, um, there was an ad that Pringles ran and for owned by Kellogg's. And so P Pringles spent millions of dollars to buy an advert for Pringles. And what happens? Frito-Lay comes in and buys the keyword term Pringles. And so they just took over share. So they, they basically spent dollars very few and certainly not six million to conquest and intercept the ad and the mindset and the mind share that they had seen. And by the way, this happens all the time. And so it's really not about outspending. It really is about outsmarting. So you might say to yourself, well, this should be a no brainer. Every time a marketer goes through their checklist of things that they do before they run a Super Bowl ad, or any ad, or just protect their brand, they'll just have a checklist of all the things that they need to do. You know, remember social media wasn't something that people were thinking about doing 10 years ago as part of their campaigns, now it's part of the launch. The challenge, the budgets are all over the place. And so the people that are spending the money on maybe the retail media are not the same that are thinking about the brand plans. And so the trick is, and this goes back to the water, how do you break it down? How do you get the right data to the right people? How do you unclog the system? And for most of the brands that we're talking about here, Profitero's clients are multinational, multi-category brands, and being able to keep track of all of this and know and get everybody to have that shared consciousness is incredibly challenging. So I'll share three ways to unclog and, uh, and then we can uh, take some questions. So the first one is a skills gap analysis. Now, you might say that sounds pretty boring, and it could be, but it's not, and I'll tell you why. So imagine you have, everybody says, oh yeah, I know about commerce. I know about e-commerce. I bought something on Amazon, and so I, I know. I picked up my groceries at Carrefour. Okay. But if you are in supply chain, do you know how your e-commerce data can be used to actually help you determine your allocations? If you are in customer support and people are calling complaining about broken cookies, and I don't mean Adam's kind of cookies, I mean like actual cookies. Um, if, you, if you're in that kind of a situation, do you know how to use that data? 
This skills gap analysis allows you to take a four minute, basically answer a few questions, and you will get an understanding as to where your organization sits in each one of those capacities to understand how to really unlock the benefit of that data. And it highlights where your areas of opportunity are, whether that's learning or whether that's just making sure the irrigation system works a little bit better. The second, incentivize behaviors. People manage to what they're measured against. We have clients that put Profitero data into their OKRs, into their MBOs. You see the Profitero data being used in earnings reports because when that's the source of truth, then everybody understands that we're measuring against the same yardstick. And once you know that we are using, that, this, that any particular company is using these data sets and these scorecards at the most senior level, I can tell you it ends up making a really big difference in how you change your behavior. And the last is merchandising successes. So it's not just about compliance. Well, let's see what happened. We had a client who was in the vitamin space. They launched a new vitamin. It was a melatonin gummy, which was very, very um, attractive during the pandemic when people couldn't sleep. And the ratings and reviews were atrocious because the gummy tasted like garbage. And it came up in the ratings and reviews instantly. The clients saw that data. They got an email alert that you got a negative review. They sent it over to product R&D, pulled it from the shelves, relaunched it three months later, and sales went up. That is when you can merchandise those stories within the organization. That's when R&D says, oh man, I better pay attention to this. So that's what we do here at Profitero, that data irrigation. There's so much out there. Like I said, 700 retail, we're covering 700 retailers in 50 countries, 70 million products, 24 terabytes of data every day, but synthesizing it in easy to understand actionable insights that help you anticipate, activate, and automate your next best step to driving profitable growth. Thibaut, you want to wrap it all up? Yep, I will one up. Uh, actually, just moving to the last slide, thank you so much for your, your attention. We just wanted to summarize in one simple slide. This has already been shared. Uh, at the time of uh, the acquisition of Profitero, but we thought it was a, a nice summary of uh, everything we are doing. Overall, there are four pillars for a successful retail media and commerce strategy. And within Publicis Group, we are lucky enough to have key capabilities in each of those four pillars. Everything starts with knowing who your customer and your prospect are. Thanks to Epsilon, thanks to the industry leading core ID, we know exactly who is shopping what and why, how behavioral intent, contextual information can actually improve your customer understanding. Thanks to Profitero, we are giving hands-on products. We know in real time what's happening on the big retailer website, what are the reviews, what are the rankings, what are the product description, how is the product evolving, how is the supply chain affected. So in real time, we can actually impact not only marketing strategy, but also operational strategy. Thanks to Publicis Media and our media network, thanks to Citrus Ad, we know how to promote and improve the placement of specific products within the retailer website. But now, thanks to the, Epsilon, thanks to the Citrus Ad powered by Epsilon, on the publisher website, on in-store stores, or even on email. Together, we are bringing the retailer brand relationship to the next area. And finally, we have not showcased it here because it's longer in the group, but we also have Sapient because all of that is surrounded by better data and actually better IT infrastructure. This is true for retailers, of course, and we went through it, but it's also, it's also true for brands. Being able to refine your IT and your corporate organization to get a customer first mindset is a long journey requires a lot of change management. It's requiring some change management, but also some engineering capabilities. And we have all of that thanks to Sapient. Thank you very much for your attention. We are now available with Sarah, Adam, and me to answer your question. And after that, we can uh, enjoy a very nice lunch together.